Now let's talk about some old skin folk that ain't kin folk because we wrapping this up. Fulton House and Tennis call out Jumani Williams. Yes, Mr. Williams. <laughs> Fulton House Tennis call out Mr. Jumani Williams and others for ignoring their two year long opposition to RAD. I found in, in this administration, they have a tendency to do things to people. And I want to see a government that's doing things with people. The plan that hands NYCHA over to private developers. Okay, so before we get to that, let's talk about what is RAD. Okay, what is RAD? By the end of this year, more than 15,000 apartments in New York City's public housing system will be operated privately. This article was written in February 7th, 2020. Okay? That's nearly 9% of the apartments owned by the New York City Housing Authority. The shift is coming via a major federal housing pro uh, program called Rental Assistance Demonstration, or RAD. It was created in the Obama years to allow local governments to get funding to upgrade public housing while still receiving public subsidies for low-income tenants. You mean to privatize public housing? That's what this is. So Obama put this in place. Okay, um, in total, New York plans to convert nearly a third of its public housing stock to about 62,000 apartments to private management. The conversions are coming as NYCHA contends to challenge with challenges that include chronic vermin, rampant mold, lead paints, billions of dollars in urgently needed repairs, and all the while embattling, embattled housing authority operates under an oversight of a federal monitor. Why? So what happens when a housing authority hands its building over to private management? Here's what you need to know. What is RAD? RAD is a national program enacted in 2012 that allows public housing agencies to switch the way they get money from the feds, moving Section 9, the way NYCHA-owned properties have historic, historically been funded, to Section 8, a program that funds private landlords. To make things just a bit more confusing, New York is combining RAD with other federal housing aid. NYCHA renamed the whole bundle PACT, Permanently Affordable Commitment, together. So if you're hearing about PACT, it is a New York City-specific version of RAD. NYCHA needs a ton of money. The New York housing th new chairperson, Gregory Russ, sent, recently said the city's public housing needs $40 billion in physical improvements right now. That's $40 billion in busted elevators, leaky roofs, obsolete boilers, pipes, and more. The Russ and Mayor Bill de Blasio RAD is part of a huge funding to underwrite the city's public housing stock before it crumbles completely. Russ, a big champion in turning public housing over to private developers, has he's done it in Cambridge, Mass., and Minneapolis, Minneapolis Minnesota. Victor Bach of Community Service Society, a longtime housing policy analyst, said the city is left with little choice because RAD is the only medicine that Washington is offering. It's a little like the situation of someone who has been diagnosed with cancer who is wondering if they should accept chemotherapy, he said. Nobody wants chemotherapy, but it's maybe the only way to address the problem. So even back then, people did not want all of this privatizing of, of, of city housing, and, and they did it anyway. So will public housing still be public? Yes and no. In a sense that private companies will be managing the properties, yes. RAD and PACT is a form of privatization. But the buildings converting through PAC, PAC, RAD and PACT will still be owned by NYCHA and covered by federal laws and regulations covering public housing, such as limiting rent to one-third of a household's income. But here's the thing. If they raise the minimum income, they can still charge a third, just a third of a higher income. They said, you see how we sold some of the affordable housing? The minimum income for affordable housing was like 77000 So that's how they get you. That's the trick bag. So the private firms will operate and manage them via long-term leases. It's a form of partial privatization. According to a handbook produced by the Legal Aid Society and Enterprise Community Partners in conjunction with the RAD Roundtable, a group of NYCHA residents, leaders, and housing advocates. Box said the housing authority can't avoid the P-word. NYCHA hates to call it privatization, but it's true. No matter how large a role NYCHA plays in post-conversation, that in order benefits RAD to be provided, it has to be in private hands. I'm in um, a few key details to know ahead of private management switch. You will need to pay rent to the new management group, and, if you, and you'll sign a lease with them too. Eviction notices will come from a new management and not from NYCHA. Rents will be set at 30% of a household income. If it's higher than that, than what you pay now, your rent will increase over the next five years. Everyone on your current lease has the right to stay post-conversion. However, any adult who wants to join your lease will have to undergo a criminal background check. NYCHA says it hopes, it says it hopes all renovations will be done without tenants having to move, but sometimes tenants may have to be relocated temporarily and will have the right to return. Yeah, right. So when is this happening? The city's first complex go through the RAD process in 2016, which I question that because Flatbush Gardens was, what, 2012? So they talking about this is 2016, but remember I posted that video about Flatbush Gardens and that was in 2012 and I was already up and running. Uh, which was the old Vanderveer projects. 
A bundle of complexes in Brooklyn that includes 2,600 um, apartments is expected to be turned over to private managers by March. So that's rad. Let's get back to Jamani, Mr. Williams. At the end of February, the final report outlining Chelsea's NYCHA working group's recommendations for Fulton and, and Elliott Housing was released. The report looks nice. The glossy representation is a real is a really is really a distraction intended to cover up an under democratic coer coercive process that is attempting to lock us residents out of decisions about the future of our homes. We know this because we participated in the working group and have been fighting for our homes and future since 2018, when plans for Fulton and Elliott Chelsea houses were first announced. In fact, over the the last two plus years, we've reached out to elected officials and media and our neighbors and held multiple rallies, press conferences, collected signatures from the majority of, he of heads of households of Fulton Houses on a petition that opposes RAD and demolition and demands public investment through Section 9, sent a letter to HUD outlining our concerns about resident exclusion from the process and more. All the while, elected officials and tenant representatives, including our tenant association president, Miguel Acevedo, have ignored. OK, I'm going to read that again. All while the elected officials and tenant representatives, including our tenant uh, association president, Miguel Acevedo, have ignored and silenced us. This report is more an example of this. It hides a lack of resident participation, silences resident dissent, and continues to ignore alternative plans that residents put forth. We write this op-ed to set the record straight. First, while nearly 5,000 residents stand to be affected by this plan, the working group plan lists, lists 22 residents in total. That means at best only 4.4% of residents were involved in regularly discussing and devising this plan for our homes and our futures. Remember when I did that post on Ray McGuire and, I, and he said that he was going to do... He was going to have a, a group of small business leaders. And I was like, well, who is going to be the group of small business leaders? And you see, this is why I ask these questions. This is why uh, 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 Dr. Claude Anderson, Anderson tells you to fillet it like a fish. Open it up. See what is in it. Ask questions. What does that mean? Because these people are sitting here telling you that they're going to get a, 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 a group of officials or, or a group of tenants to represent you. But then they go and get President Miguel Acevedo, who does everything in his power, to go against what the tenants want. And really, this number is lower as many resident, resident members listed only as attended one or two in-person meetings from October 2019 to March 2020. Let's skip along. Beyond working, the working group itself, the report overstates that the group's engagement with residents more broadly while glossing over dissent for alternatives. I'm going to skip down some more. The same thing happened at the resident meeting held at Elliott Chelsea. In addition, residents raised concern about the safety and security and then asked NYCHA to change the office manager due to lack of work from the office, maintenance, and the grounds. None of these concerns have been addressed because they want y'all to move. So they can put in who they want to do and new low-income housing could be for $75,000 for, for incomes of minimum $75,000. We also know, talking through our, with our neighbors, that holding meetings via Zoom presents real barriers for many of our neighbors. Many don't have access to the necessary hardware, don't have stable internet connection, or are comfortable with digital technology. And this prevented many from participating in these meetings. This concern was also substantial that we wrote to HUD about in, two, in November 2020. We also presented an alternative plans. And so they just go on and on and on and talk about all the things that they have done. To, to, to try to get these people to listen to them. And Jumali Williams is doing whatever he wants to do. And I have a question about that, Mr. Williams. What are you getting out the deal? What you getting out of it? I guarantee you getting something. You ain't doing something for nothing. And you seem like you getting a little high uh, 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 up, up there pretty quickly yourself. I see politically you moving around from, from, from uh, position to position, Mr. Williams. So the people who voted you into these positions, the elderly people that voted you into these positions, these same people you ignoring them now, Mr. Williams? I thought you was one of us, Mr. Williams. Or are you skin folk that ain't kin folk, Mr. Williams? I say tenant, you say power. Tenant, power. Tenant, power. I say tenant, you say power. Tenant, power. Tenant, power. All right, thank you all organizations for being out here today. Thank you for our attorney general for showing up and being out here. We're gonna hear from her as long as my colleagues in the state and city in a little bit. Uh, and today we are here to announce, again, the worst landlords in the city. I thought it was vital to carry on this annual list to shine a spotlight on the worst landlords. I have, as we mentioned, been a tenant organizer, a community organizer, housing chair of the city council, and now as public advocate, I want to make sure I continue to amplify and lift the voices of the people of this city whose voices aren't being heard and tenants who are suffering because of the worst landlords in our city. We see you. At least I see you. 
And now everybody else starting to see you too. Unfortunately, it's a little too late for those residents. Why, it's you liberals who have lifted them up, Howard. Paul, you conservatives make a mistake. You can't afford to strangle hope in people. Without hope, people become dangerous. No, Howard, you liberals have let them invade our society. You give them jobs, political jobs. Paul, you missed the point. It's only the smart ones we move up. <laughs> that makes it even worse. Oh, you know, we have to move them up. If we leave a smart one in the ghetto, he might develop into a leader against us. But if we raise him up into white society, we neutralize him. He feels compelled to try to act like us. He loses his identity and uh, his racial anger, if he has any. He becomes alien to his brothers. They realize he sold them out and they grow to hate him. He becomes worthless to them and safe for us. Uh, no, thank you. In fact, in his love for the creature comforts, except for his color, he's become one of us. Um, and I'm just going to end it with this. I think it's so freaking interesting. Um, yeah, so ever since, like, Cuomo has been, you know, they, they've got allegations against him for sexual harassment. Yo, he's just been opening up the city. I want you guys to sign up for these free text alerts because my posts are being suppressed on every form of social media that I am a part of. My posts are being suppressed on Instagram. Um, they're being suppressed on Facebook. And they're being suppressed on YouTube. On Instagram, they are removing followers. They are purging my followers. Um, and with Facebook, they're just, even if you follow me, they just suppress everything. So sign up for these free text alerts. That way, regardless of their efforts to suppress my posts, you will know because I will personally send you a text message. Um, if you just go to bit.ly slash text new post, and you, it'll take you less than 30 seconds. Just sign up and put your phone number in there, and then I will send you a text when I put up um, my new news articles for the week. And it'll have a link to the YouTube playlist, the Instagram playlist, and the Facebook playlist. So you can choose whichever uh, social media medium you would like to watch. But this allows me to get around their algorithms, to get around them still suppressing the information from you that have chosen to follow me.